Manus is kind of like the world's first general agent. And today, we're launching an early preview of Manus, the first general AI agent. At the peak moment, Korean user just contributes to like 10% of the, our whole traffic. The model can think on itself, has its own plan, and execute the plan step by step by just by itself, and delivers the final result. We are the fastest AR growing AI startup. A lot of founders and investors, they all ask the same questions about what if OpenAI did the same thing? When they asked the question, they were already had their answer because they think the model company is kind of like a superior company. Whatever they do, they will do it better. So it's really hard to convince them to trust us. Last month in July, ChatGPT just released their own agent. My CEO Red and I, we were in San Francisco. We too may be the happiest person on the earth. Other agent builders, investors, and the question was always, what happens if OpenAI just builds this tomorrow? Finally, just yesterday, we got the response, what happens if OpenAI just builds this? We try like all the use cases they showed in their launch video. Let's just watch side by side on a few tasks. Let's see the results. And uh, what I can see is like in most of these use cases, our deliveries are much better than the ChatGPT agent. It's totally like a game changer. Hi, I am Tao, co-founder of Minus AI, and right now I'm acting as our chief product officer here. We just finished our last round fundraising back in April. We raised like $75 million and the valuation at $500 million. After ChatGPT launched, I just tapped the product and it, it's just like magic. Back in that time, I've already in this industry for more than 14 years. I think this may be the biggest opportunity in my career. So I decided to just, uh, you know, just, just quit. Everyone is building chatbot. I don't want to build another chatbot. Right now, humans, us, <laughs> we are the limitation of AI because we, we don't have enough questions. We don't have the right question to ask the AI. Then the true potential of AI is just limited by us. My focus actually is explore how humans should interact with AI. So I explore many, many different demos and uh, directions. What I found out in that journey is that we must uh, find out a way that to interact with AI, not just by questions. So my dream is that I want to build a product that can influence 24 hours, generate intelligence, provide intelligence 24 hours for a single human, even without users us. The original inspiration is actually, you know, in from Cursor, because last year in July, Cursor just went so viral. Some of our friends and the families, they are not coders. They are not programmers. They don't know how to code in their whole lifetime. But what we saw is that they are starting to use Cursor to solve their daily tasks. My wife is using Cursor to converting a video file to an audio file. So these are the moments we, we think which is the most interesting part is that these people, these long coders, they have started to leverage the power of AI coding to solve their daily tasks. And when they are using cursor, they don't care about the left side of cursor, which is the code editor side, because they don't know coding at all. So the only thing they do is to keep pressing the accept button on the right panel. Accept, 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 accept. So that's actually the moment we think maybe we should build the right panel of cursor. When I joined this company, we've already had a very successful product called Omonica.im. It's kind of like an AI Chrome browser extension. So Omonica just helps you to leverage the AI just in your web page. We started this project from last March to last October. We spent seven months more of work, but we never released that product. Why is that? Is because, you know, we found it, the whole experience is kind of weird. What you see is that the AI is competing with you for your computer. So which means like when, when the AI started uh, its process, you have to keep your hands off the keyboard because any movement to the keyboard will break the AI process. So the whole experience, you know, is kind of weird and we don't want to deliver that experience to our users. AI should not compete for your computer. The AI should have its own computer.
the setting for Monica is kind of like low for us because it's a Chrome browser extension. These three words, each of them just lowered the setting for us. Not everyone is using Chrome. Not everyone knows their browser can install an extension. <laughs> so we want to build something like bigger. Back in that time, it's really not an easy decision because, you know, at that time, we only have 40 people and we put 20 people on this project. That's, that's half of this company. For a small startup, it's really, you know, a big investment, a lot of resources. But why we, why we decided to do that, I think it's for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that like Red and I at peak, you know, our chief scientist, we three people, we, we are all product person inside our heart. Even, even peak is responsible for the, for the science part. Red is for the CEO part. But, you know, deep in our heart, we are product person. We don't believe that that is the experience we want to deliver to our users. We can't pass our, you know, our own standard. It, it, it won't pass our own standard. And the second reason that we think if we release that project, we believe there will be, you know, there must will be some users. But after you release it, you have to maintain it, which means the whole team can't focus on finding the next big thing. So at that time, we, we took maybe, I remember it's like two or three weeks to debates on whether we should continue that project. And finally, we decided to sunset it. Without that decision, I don't believe that Manus will Will, will be in the, in, the, in the world. After that, we are thinking about, okay, now, what's the next step? I'm a podcast lover. I subscribe to, you know, a lot of, of podcasts. So whenever I was driving, taking a bath, I always listen to podcasts. So right now, you know, I have a scheduled task in Manus, which is like collect the user feedback from LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, all these social platforms. At every morning, 6 a.m., Manus will go out, collect all the la yesterday's user feedback on different social platforms and make them into a podcast. It's really uh, interesting. And one user meetup we hosted in Dubai, there's someone coming and talk to me. He's a social media expert. He is doing consulting to build a social media strategy. And what he showed me really shocked me because, you know, he is using Manus to build a three month social media strategy for his client. And uh, what Manus delivers is a 86 page handbook. It's a very detailed playbook. This is the content you should post on LinkedIn. This is the content you should post on Instagram. This is the content you post, should post on X. With that very detailed playbook, I think like any junior people in, in his sense company, can just uh, run their social media. And uh, that task uh, only cost him maybe seven or eight dollars. Different people have different tasks. In the, in the very beginning, we have a serious discussion is about whether we should hide all the details or we just expose them all. But the final decision is we just expose all the details, which means uh, when you are using Manus, we will show you like how Manus is thinking and uh, what his decision for the uh, next step. That's, that's a very different experience when you are in chatbot because you, when you are chatbot, it's always like waiting for the AI to finish its answer. <laughs> but, but agent is different. Why we choose to do that? Because we think agent is, is so new. People are not familiar with the AI agents. So we just want to show the whole process to build trust with our users and let our users know what is happening. And uh, if something is going wrong, they can just interrupt at any time and tell the agent, okay, you are acting the wrong way. You should do, do, do things in that way. But, but, but that can be interrupted at any time and uh, learn from your input and uh, go to another direction. It's more like a co-working experience. Unfortunately, we put a lot of resources and uh, engineering efforts for this feature. But right now, there's only a few people, you know, a few portion of users are waiting to jump in. I think right now the biggest challenge actually is not just from some, some technical uh, perspective. When you are a tool that can do anything, which means when you are facing a new user, it's very hard to tell the user. It's like, uh, what's your first task? <laughs> actually, we, we tried some features, just like uh, galleries. Uh, this is the type of task you can do. We also like try to do some task suggestions, like uh, when you upload some file, we will tell you, 
what kind of task you can do with this file, with this type of file. So actually, that's the biggest challenge right now, because for most of people, maybe it's their first time to interact with agent. All their knowledge of AI coming from using a chatbot. So actually, they don't know what kind of task they can assign to an agent. I think that that's still this time from us and also from the whole industry to educate the users. It's really like working with a real human intern. First week, you, you will find like many conflicts, but after you teaching or her and uh, like span, it may work better. My advice is just uh, focus on the outcome you want, you know, just describe what kind of things you want instead of like teaching it step by step, talk to it or just assign a task to it, then it will first uh, have its own plan. Plan is very important. And then it will start to execute the plan. And when, when the agent is executing its own plan in each step, he will do some rethinking about, okay, considering all the information at hand, do I need to change the original plan? Or I just, uh, you know, follow the plan to the next step. And when you are seeing that maybe the agent is visiting the wrong website, you can always jump in, you know, you can interact at any point, at any time. And uh, the agent will instantly react to your feedback and change its path based on your feedback to the right path. What we believe is that in our real world, it's just a world full of tools. I think in the future, maybe there will be some new software and new services, which are designed not for human, but for agents. 2025 gonna be the first year of AI applications. Because I think for the past two years, it's all about like AI models. It's about training models, training models. I think the model, actually, I think it's already smarter than most of the humans. The problem is not about the model side. There are not enough good AI apps. So I think the problem is at the product side. The most important thing is always about, do you have a problem to solve? When I'm using Cursor, when I'm using Granola, I was thinking, okay, this is definitely the tool I did because this, they are solving my aims. So sometimes, you know, when talking to founders, I think the biggest mistake is that they don't have a problem to solve. They just want to start a company. When you want to build something new, it must be coming from some pain points. Not just, okay, I just want to catch up with the AI train. It's always about your goal. It's always about your, uh, your, your, your target. For me, which is like, I've already doing startups for for 15 years, you will always have the time that you will question yourself is that, am I on the right path? <laughs> yeah, even like two weeks before we released Manus, we invited some of our friends and the investors to test uh, the early versions of Manus. Some of them are very excited about, okay, this is something that's going to change the world. And someone is saying, okay, yeah, it's slow. And uh, I don't see who is this product for, you know. And we are very like... Uh, in a very hard situation, it's like uh, whether we should keep building it until everyone is satisfied with it or we just release it. But sometimes you have to trust your gut. Okay, I think it's good enough. It's good enough to let the world to, to test it. The only one we can find that, that trusts us is ourselves. I believe this is the right way. And uh, we think we are still at the very, very, very early stage. 